<laughs> no, thank you. Here we are at NAB 2024 with none other than L. Dean from Sony. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> great, great, thank you. What are you excited about with uh, NAB 2024? So I think my most exciting product that we're going to be talking about is the PDT FP1 portable data transmitter, okay. which is this product over here. Okay. Right, so it does exactly what uh, the name says, right? It's a portable data transmitter multiple different applications. So think of it in the sense of it's a monitor, an encoder, and a transmitter. You can transmit you know, either photos or videos or even do live streaming. So essentially taking content from the camera to the cloud, but utilizing either Wi-Fi LAN, but most importantly, 5G uh, mobile network, right? So it has uh, both, you know, obviously 3, 4, and 5G, but with 5G, we've got you know, sub six C band and millimeter wave, so you can cover all the spectrum. So not only for uh, long distance, but also throughput. So for higher uh, bitrate transmission. Incredible. What is this application perfect for? So a number of different applications that this can be used for. So obviously, as I mentioned, it is a monitor. You can use it as an external professional monitor. It has uh, a cooling fan and a heat sink, so you can use it for long periods of time. In fact, we were streaming for eight hours on the first day and it didn't even get warm to the touch. It has an HDMI cable, so you can just imagine you can take a 4K signal out into the device, it does the encoding, you can monitor it on the screen, and then you can stream. We also have dual USB, so the USBs can be used for power delivery, one could also be used for data transmission, and then we have a LAN, an RJ45 LAN cable as well. Obviously for internet connectivity, but also for uh, networking capabilities or file transfer capabilities. So in this particular setup that I have here, this could be used for individual content creators for streaming, it could be used for news organizations, for news gathering, where you have a single camera that's essentially connected to a cloud service or to a cloud-based location if you're gonna be streaming back to you know, maybe a news organization or even just going directly to YouTube via you know, RTMP setup, you know, any, any of those uh, online uh, platforms. So here I have it as a monitor that's controlling, I'm sending my signal, basically go live immediately. Second application is what we have for professional photographers. So that's in this application over here. And if you think about it, this is an Olympic year, so we're gonna have a lot of photographers that are gonna be using this. And instead of connecting by a wire, you'll find a lot of professional cameras, especially like the Alpha 1 or the Alpha 9 Mark III, those have LAN cables. Those are typically used in these major sporting events or journalists would use them in major events, you know, whether they're covering politics or, as I mentioned, sports, connecting into the camera and being able to transfer photos directly to a photo editor that's usually at a remote location. It could be on site, but it could also be remote. Instead of going over a cable now, we can go over the 5G mobile network. So the, the operator is, or the photographer is able to photograph a newsworthy event Think about if they're going to be at the Olympics, and let's just say that it's the you know, women's finals in gymnastics. They can have all that data pre-set up in the IPTC for the camera. So it'll have the photographer's name, the organization they work with, uh, the event that they're at, and then they can have transfer and tagging applications set up in a situation where if they tag an image, it can then upload directly to the FTP server. So as a photo editor, I'm sitting back and I get notified that there's something's happened. I can immediately see a photographer is now taking 120 frames a second with the Alpha 9 Mark III, find the perfect shot, tag it, do voice to text, that also gets written into the IPTC data. Photo editor then gets that image, opens it up, it looks fantastic, and it says, this is the photographer, he gets his credits, this is the organization he's with, and this is you know, Simone Biles winning the gold for women's floor exercise or whatever it is. So now he has all that data as well. So really, really good for you know not only video but streaming, but also for photo. In addition to that, we have in addition, uh, okay, more, more, more. <laughs> Sony just changing the game year after year. This is incredible. Wait, okay, that's not all. Okay, so with the same device, right? So again, this is kind of in a news uh, configuration for news gathering, but we could also add in our RPU7 and the ME8. So the RPU7 is a high efficiency encoder. It then utilizes the PDT FP1 only as the monitor and transmitter, and it goes then to the ME80 as a decoder. So, this is for super low latency. So, put it in where you're doing multi camera uh, shoot, let's say a football game, for instance, and you do a multi camera uh, angles, you can't have latency between switching cameras because action happens so quickly. You know, you could be watching a UFC fight and you have to be able to switch quickly. You can't have a person about to throw a punch 
and then you switch to another camera angle and they're about to throw the same punch. You have to be able to switch very, very quickly. So for super low latency, using the RPU7 as a high efficiency quick encoder, transmitting via the ME80, and going into the decoder, and you can have multiple cameras, and those then feed into a switcher, whether it's remote or virtual. It could be virtual online, or it could be maybe sitting out in the parking lot in an OB van to go to switch. So a number of different solutions all out of the same device. Incredible. You're yep. bringing huge systems into this small little yeah. compact device. Compact device. Yep. Incredible. Can we talk about price? Yeah, we can actually. Okay. Uh, you better be sitting down. It's only $1,100, which is pretty amazing. Okay. <laughs> so you get a monitor, an encoder, and a transmitter for eleven hundred dollars. There's okay. monitors that cost more than eleven hundred dollars. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> and it has all the professional monitor features in it as well. And you can get some encoders that cost more than that as well. So monitor, encoder, transmitter, eleven hundred dollars, and we should be shipping in June timing. And this is with Sony quality. Absolutely, hundred percent. There's no no other way. Yeah. I'm excited for this. Okay, yeah. that, that is incredible. We have the camera, the encoder, the transmitter, the receiver, and the live production switcher. Can you show me the size of these units? Maybe yeah, we can head it over to the network live and I can go and show you what those look like. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. Okay. We'll follow. Let's head over. This is the RPU7, the encoder. Yeah, so you're going to get your camera feed out of your broadcast camera into the RPU7. That's going to do a high efficiency encoding and then that'll send a signal through the PDT FP1 back to the ME80, which we'll have a look at in a second. That's going to be your decoder. Look how small this thing is, man. It's pretty light as well. Very light. Yeah, maybe a pound and a half. Excellent. Nice mounting. LCD. Beautiful. What is this we're standing next to? This is the ME80, the decoder for the RPU7. The signal comes from the RPU7 through the pdt fp one into the ME80. Okay, excellent. Small. Super small, super compact. Pretty simple. <laughs> You're going to have multiple of these in a rack. Okay. Sweet, going into a switcher. So each camera needs its own encoder, transmitter, and receiver. So depending on how many cameras you have in your system, that's how many you'll have in your rack. Can we please talk about the latency? Yeah, so with the current system that we have set up, we've been measuring about three frames. With the three cost. frames. Incredible. Yeah which is about 80 milliseconds, and that's essentially glass to glass. That's pretty much the whole system. We have applications for drone as well. Okay, where are we and what are we doing now? All right, so now we're in the uh, Creators Cloud for individuals, and within Creators Cloud's suite of products, we've got a couple of new updates to our apps. So when you buy a Sony product, a Sony camera, you're not just stuck with the camera the way it is. So we've constantly doing uh, improvements and firmware updates, and recently we've done some firmware updates to some cameras that a lot of people absolutely love and been asking for a while, the Alpha 1 and the Alpha 7 S3, to make it compatible with our Creators app. So what the Creators app is, it's your companion to your camera, and this is available on both iOS and Android, uh, now expanding uh, compatibility. So all the cameras from the Alpha 7 IV, the 7C Mark II, the 7CR, FX3, FX30, etc. A lot of cameras are already uh, on the uh, Creators app. We're now moving some of the other cameras that started on Imaging Edge Mobile onto Creators app, but they had to have a firmware update, right? So first of all, we're expanding to more cameras. And secondly, we've updated the app with a ton of new features. It's easier to connect to. Uh, it's way more stable. A really cool feature that I love is that you can actually connect it via USB to your camera, and you don't even have to go through the Bluetooth setup at that phase because it connects directly. You eliminate any latency. I can control the camera directly via cable. And I've tried with this with an eight foot USB-C cable and it works perfectly. You can also then get all the images on your camera directly through the cable. So you can just imagine transferring files via Wi-Fi, how slow that is, hit it with a cable, you can instantly transfer your files. Now I can bring it into my mobile device if I need to share it instantly, or I can also upload it directly to my creator's cloud account. So when you sign up for a Sony global account, that gives you access to, a, a, you know, throughout from PlayStation to Sony Pictures to you know Sony Imaging, including Creators Cloud. So with the Creators Cloud, really cool feature that I like is I can import LUTs into the cloud. So if I go into here, so this is what the online cloud interface looks like. Here you can see I've got my FX connected to that. If I go into my settings on the side here, I can pull up LUTs. So now I can use not only my cloud storage to transfer and store my images, but I can also download and store my LUTs over here. So if I have it connected to my FX, which I have connected over here, I go into my settings, I can go to LUTs, 
and now I can access the LUTs that I have in the cloud and I can apply them to the camera. So now what I'll do is I'll connect to the camera. So you can just imagine if I want to set and I have multiple cameras and I want them all to have the same LUT. So this is connected to the camera. These are the, the available user LUT ports that I can bring it into. So we'll go and select an empty one. Now it says I want to use an import. Now it gives me two options. It says, do I want to import it from the cloud or do I want to import it from my mobile device? So if I download a LUT onto my mobile device, let's say I'm using an iPhone, I can airdrop that to you and then you can apply that exact same LUT onto your camera as well. So if we're both on the same shoot with the same cameras, we can apply it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. And what I'm going to do, I'll select from the cloud. So I connect it to the camera. And now what I've done is I've connected to my Creators Cloud account. And these are all the LUTs that I've already uploaded to the Creators Cloud account, right? So now in here, I can go and have a look at a LUT. I can see what the log versus the LUT looks like. And I can see maybe that's the one I want to apply. I go and I find that I could do the same thing over here. If I'm going to look at a LUT, I can now go and I may not have chosen the same one, but I can see what my log versus my LUT looks like. Okay. I can now download this to my device. So previously I was saying that you have two options from the cloud or from the device. So if I already had it downloaded on my device, instantly. I can then just instantly. But now I just go and I go uh, connect to camera. I'm going to update the camera. It's now connecting again to update. It'll say update there. Say okay. Basically, the camera now has the LUT applied to it. So you can just see how versatile this could be for a lot of people working on set, right? It's much easier to use. Even, even if you have a LUT change during the day, you're going from one type of look on one part of the shoot to another type of look on another part of the shoot. I can have several LUTs downloaded onto my device. I can have multiple cameras. And I can literally go through each one of them and update them all to have the exact same look. It's pretty, pretty, pretty incredible. Incredible, yeah. yeah. And then we also have monitor and control applications. So what well, monitor and control is, we already have this application in the market. We've been working very hard with our engineering team to update the UI and the UX and also make it a little bit more robust. So the biggest update that we have here now is we're able to connect to multiple cameras using the version 2. This version 2 will be available at the end of May. We're in beta at the moment. But you have all the same controls that you would have over a single camera, but you can now have up to four cameras. The other benefit here is it's not just a Wi-Fi peer-to-peer connection. I can have this connected through a router or a Wi-Fi hotspot. So to connect multiple cameras, I can either have a router and go a LAN cable to another camera. So this camera here is the FX6, which is on the set out in the front of the booth. And I have full control of this. I can touch to focus. I can even go into my zoom setting and you can see it will hold the focus point on that person that I've already touched. Incredible. Right? And I have full control over focus, I've got control over iris, I've got control over shutter, I can even go into my looks, but even better than that, I can go and apply the looks that I've already uploaded into the cloud. So the same way that I've applied my LUTs using the one-on-one -on -one with the camera, I can now go into my four cameras here and I can go and look up the like download what I've got on the web and apply it here. So this makes it super versatile for being on set. And you can imagine, even if you're working with a client and your client needs a monitor, I can monitor and control from the iPad. And in this case, I've got a dongle at the back here which is going HDMI out to this TV. So now my client can see exactly what, what we're actually capturing as well. Incredible. So I need to wait until May to get this new monitor and control. Yeah, you can actually download the current version now and play around with it. When you download the version 2 in May, you'll see the vast improvements that we made to it as well. Incredible. I'm, I'm excited to see this. This is a game changer. Now it has zoom and focus on the same window, so you don't have to jump between windows to That's zoom and exactly focus. So this, yep. is, this is incredible and this is going to change the lives of so many creators. Yep. I agree. Where do people go to stay yeah. up to date with uh, Sony products? And yeah, actually, it's a good good point. So anything that has to do with our cloud services, we have Creators Cloud. You go to Creators Cloud. Uh, there's a link to our Enterprise Cloud as well because we have Creators Cloud for individuals and Creators Cloud for Enterprise. Most of our products that we're showing over here are on Pro.Sony, uh, including the new PDT FP1. Amazing. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. And don't forget, you can get the Creators app and the Monitor and Control app for both Android and iOS. Just go to those particular stores and you can download them. They're both free, so check them out. Incredible. Aldine, thank, thank you, you so much. much. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, you too. Thank you. <laughs>